of Sunday. It is me, Rosella Idewa, your Love Big Coach, and I'm coming to you today from the D.C. metro area. Um, I flew out to D.C. on July 31st to come and see my best friend and a few other folks um, during this time, which I know is seemingly controversial for many in terms of flying and all of that, but just so folks know, I tested for COVID before I left, um, like about a month, maybe a couple weeks before I came out here, and then I tested again on Friday while I was here. Um, and it has been exactly what I've needed, right? It's been a moment to see my beloveds, to rest, to reflect, to be renewed, and to ultimately imagine what so many things could be and what this next chapter and phase of my work will look like. So it's been a really good time and I'm really excited about it. Um, and I'll be going from here to Chicago on Tuesday to see my other best friend, um, hence the other test last week. And um, I'm just looking forward to it. Part of the reality is that many of the women in my life that I'm closest to are single women um, who have been quarantining alone or who have been serving other communities, but really not um, finding time for themselves. So on the one hand, it's selfish of me because I want to see them and I miss them. And everyone who knows me knows how much I love to travel. But on the other hand, it is a part of the interdependent community that we've created, right? Over the, the years in our friendships, we have committed to show up for each other because we don't have um, traditional partnerships by way of an intimate partner. And so we provide care for one another, um, holistic care for one another in times of crisis and in times of joy. So here we are. One of the things that has come up though over the last couple of weeks is a conversation that I've been having with my best friend about one of the things that I would say are a central tenant to my work. And I've been invited to consider how I might be evolving, right, in this this way of being. So again, I wrote Love Big over the course of three years. It came out in 2019, and I had been thinking about it, dreaming of it for years prior to when I started writing it. And a lot of it, like I'm learning with a lot of writ writers, um, was about a particular season in my life, right? Like I feel like the elements and themes of the book um, will continue, but the learnings that I present came out of both my woundedness and also um, my lived experience, right? So one of the, the tenants I talk about or the central themes in the book is how do you love someone as yourself if you don't love yourself? And I still believe that the deeper that we fall in love with ourselves, the greater capacity we have to love others. But there's been a nuance that I've been playing with recently that it's not so much that I think you can't love other people if you don't love yourself, because I think about even in my own life living with depression and really feeling um, shame and antagonism and deep self-loathing, I still loved other people, would say that I loved other people, but I did not love myself, right? Um, but I think what the nuance that I've been invited to consider is the ways in which we love ourselves right? Reflect on how we're able not only to love others, but also receive love from others, right? So if I don't, if I'm not in love with myself, and I think I've talked about before the difference between loving and being in love, but if I'm not in love with myself, nurturing life, nurturing liberation, nurturing sustenance, right? It becomes the way that I love other people, I think can be limited, and the way that I'm, in, I'm loved by other people is definitely limited, right? Because I don't feel like I'm worthy to receive that. And so this season has been a season of me thinking more deeply about these things, but also working on the way that I receive, right? Or don't receive. Um, and like everything else I'm learning, there are correlations, right? So the way that I am able to give to others or to myself is connected to how I give to others. The way that I'm able to receive from others is connected to, to the way that I think about receiving in the world. But really this um, invitation this week for me has been to reflect on the way that I love myself. And that includes keeping my words to myself. That includes engaging in life-giving speaking and action and affirmation of myself. Um, does correlate to then what I'm able to do and be for others as it relates to loving them. And so again, this self-love journey is not about just an internal 
journey. It's not about just internal work. It's about deeply rooting ourselves in our stories and un, um, uncovering those stories that have been limiting and oppressive and rooting ourselves in stories that are life-giving and affirming and provide sustenance and lead us into creativity and ultimately lead us to experience liberation and justice. Um, but rooting ourselves in that allows us to be for people in a different way. Even as we love them and care for them, um, even if we don't necessarily love and care for ourselves, when we do that work, our love for others expands. One of, I think, my favorite lines from the book, if I'm able to say that, is that love never diminishes. Love always expands. And so the more that we engage this work of loving ourselves, the more that we are able to engage in an expansive love, right, that welcomes all, sees all, knows all, and ultimately loves all. So thank you for being with me today. Um, I hope you take a moment to read uh, the actual newsletter that accompanies the video because there's some exciting things happening. I am so excited about what's coming up, namely um, my racial healing and wellness initiative, which includes three different offerings, one for black women, one for white women, and one for women of color. And over the next month and a half, two months, I'll be rolling out each of those initiatives in different ways. Um, but I always want you to be the first to know. So I shared with you all about my Hush Harbor series for black women. And then um, this week, I'll be sharing more about my program, my racial healing and wellness coaching program for white women. So I love you and I love you big. Have a great week.